do want to continue our discussion of the SEC in 2009 and 2010. Will we be seeing more of Madoff or will new names be making headlines as SEC targets? Joining us now is former federal prosecutor Doug Burns. Great to see you again, Doug. I know you do a lot of work with the SEC. Hi there. A lot of criticism. They're really under fire here because Mary Shapiro, the chairman, came out with all of these grand ideas to really rein in the insider tradings and the other scandals. Right. And the lobbyists really fought back a lot of them and they've had to pare down. Well. Madoff was like the sinking of the Titanic in 1912. That's how serious it was. Not only did they miss it, as you described it, but don't forget a whistleblower had alerted them a number of times, if you remember. And of course, while it's easy to second guess them in retrospect um, and you want to be fair to them, the fact is they did miss it and somebody alerted them to it and it was billions and billions of dollars. So coming out of that, the SEC needs to repair its image. Now, your point, which is a good one, was they said, look, we're going to have 10,000 surprise inspections of money managers and then all of a sudden lobbyists came in really really intensely as Jesse explained earlier as well and now it's down to only 1600 however in fairness I looked at it a little closer and what they did is they said those who actually don't have the assets under management are not going to be subject to the inspections. okay so have they done these surprise inspections and have they found anything <coughs> at the very least that's suspicious uh, that I don't know uh, I'm not sure how far into uh, the activity you know, regulatory activity they are. But I do know that I looked at a pretty complicated chart uh, this afternoon, um, which breaks down whether some money managers just deduct a fee, they don't have any control over the assets, they're not subject to it. And as you go up a ladder towards having actual control over the assets, then you're subject to the surprise inspection. And if I may put a positive on it, I think it's a good thing. Okay, we'll leave it there. Let's move on, right. though. There's the big criticism is that the SEC is simply moving too slowly. Right. Well, of course. I mean, the other thing that's interesting is I think it was you and I that discussed the Department of Justice initiative where they're going to have a new task force on white collar crime. Now, it's all fine and well to have a big press conference and an announcement, but the question is, well, what happens after the dust settles from the press conference? So here, same point you just made, they announced we are going to target short selling. We're going to target, by the way, um, composition of board of directors. I don't know if you saw that. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Credit rating rules. Credit money rating market rules. rules. Exactly. And the fact is, as Jesse said, they've been unable to get them across the goal line. So there's a big difference between announcing. I mean, we all know this. You make an announcement, but it's hard to deliver the goods on it, particularly, and not to be a broken record, with the lobbying pressure that exists. They have so much influence. Is that a problem in and of itself? That's a huge problem in and of itself and a huge problem Especially in our... Especially these lobbies, obviously, are paid yeah, by the financial I mean, institutions themselves. Not to make this too global or an overgeneralization, it's a huge problem with our system of legislation mm -hmm. across the board in every area. So Obama's targeting that with his financial systems regulation reform yes. proposing. Do no you question. think that's going to come in? I think so, yeah. I mean, uh, again, you know, the other point I want to make, which I think is, is a good one to make, is that sometimes the real, real big cases, Lori, you know, bring an image that may be out of whack in fairness with the reality. In other words, the they miss a Madoff. So now all of a sudden the entire agency is condemned. That's not really fair either, by the way. Speaking of which, Raja Raja Ratnam. Yes. That's the latest there. What's going on? This is this right. one really didn't go through the cracks. No, that that's that's a very interesting case because as you've heard me and others say, you know, it's the first insider trading case with a hedge fund. It's a rare case where they use wiretaps capturing actual conversations and I think that's going to make the case strong. Basically the case is pending. It's going to be on a, on a slow track but I heard now that uh, one of the lawyers was saying that he's not going to be ready for trial so it's going to be a while. We'll have to follow that one through but you mentioned the wiretapping this new way of investigating. Is yes. this on the docket? Yeah no good point. That's not really new. They use it in organized crime and drug cases all the time. But with the SEC. New with the SEC. You're right. So the point is that right there See, in law enforcement, you have deterrence. You know, in other words, when they do a prosecution, not only do they want to prosecute that person, they want to hopefully deter others. So they're hoping that Wall Street execs and others are like, oh my God, are they listening to my conversations? Do we know if more conversations are being listened to? Obviously, I can't ask you specifics, <laughs> yeah. but no, hedge I mean, funds, private equity funds out there. Very, very possible. No, I think you're right. Very possible. Oh, okay, we'll have to read through the lines on that one. Doug Burns, former federal prosecutor. So great to have you on set today. Thanks, Thanks for again. having me on. Okay.